Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to use a couple of the newest not too shabby stamp sets along with the wreath builder to create a card. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Today I want to show you how you can use non-wreath builder stamp sets with the wreath builder to create cute cards. You can look at any stamps you currently have in your stash and just look for some that have smaller images that you could build that wreath with. Today I'll be using two stamp sets from the latest Not Too Shabby kit, Mermaids and Friends, and just a heads up that there are only a handful left so if you were thinking about getting that kit you might want to snag it up. But good news is if you're too late for the kit there are still some of these stamp sets available individually. So I will link the kit and these stamp sets in the description box below. What I'll be doing today is using the little seashells and the bubbles to create a wreath with the wreath builder templates. Now the fun thing about these two stamp sets is that you can mix and match those seashells and they go together perfectly. For my inks, I just chose some different shades of blue and then the craft from Gina K Designs. As I stamp my wreath builder later, I will tell you each color that I use with each shell. As I start the process and voiceover, I will let you know about any other products or tools that I bring in. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can always leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Before I get started, I did have a couple channel member shout outs. I would like to say thank you and welcome to my latest paper trimmer level members, Ruth McCurry and Linda Hayes. Thank you so much ladies for your support. Also a big thank you to all of my channel members. If you want to know more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link at the top of the description box below. For my wreath today, I'm going to be using the template that calls for the 4 inch square piece of cardstock. I did tape that down to the mouse pad in my Misty and I will also be using the magnet later to help me hold the cardstock in place. I do have the newer wreath builder template that comes with that insert that has the etched circles and I will actually have that help me place my very first shell which is from the Beamer Amazing stamp set and I am stamping in tranquil teal. I go left to right horizontally and move it just a little bit out from center. Once I have that at a good place, then I just start building my wreath. Now I will ink up and stamp each of these images eight times around in a circle. This template makes it so easy and while this may be a lot of stamping, I really like the outcome you get. It can be so colorful and you didn't have to color in those images individually. Once I was done with the first shell, I chose a second one and this will be stamped in Blue Lagoon and is from the Hugs and Fishes stamp set. I will continue to place shells and then stamp them in different colors. As I go along, the name of the color I use and the stamp set that the shell came from will pop up on screen for you. But there are a lot of other tutorials out there how to use a wreath builder, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that today. I just want you to get a little glimpse. For the third shell, which I'm using craft, this will be a little bit different because you'll see here after I get it set up and stamped for the first time, when I go to stamp it the second time, some of that shell is actually going to fall off the cardstock. 
Now when I was doing my samples earlier, I just let it fall off, but then I noticed my fingers got all inky, the back of my cardstock got all inky, and then that transferred to the front. So I am putting this piece of white paper, it was just from the recycle bin, underneath my template. That way the ink will go onto that and not onto my fingers. For the fourth and final shell, I chose sea glass ink and my shell is from Hugs and Fishes. This is once again going to be the same thing, so I'll just show you a couple of the stamps before I move on to the final stamp that I'm going to be using. The final parts of this wreath, and yes I said parts, will be stamped in Night of Navy and I chose two of the accent bubble images to finish off this wreath. I place each of those in the wreath to kind of just cover up some of the white area and then I'm going to ink those up and stamp them. Now because the one on the very edge will only be stamped every other or when it's sitting square, I only ink up those outer bubbles every other time, but the inner ones always get inked up and stamped. This once again is the same process until the wreath is all finished. I chose three of the shells from the wreath and I will be stamping those with Versamark ink and heat embossing them. At first I got out the clear, but you'll see later I do change that. I'm going to be stamping these today on just a scrap of Strathmore Bristol Smooth because I'm going to be doing some water coloring with inks. I laid out each of the shells onto the cardstock and that's when I noticed they were each just a little bit discolored. So I switched to detail white embossing powder in case it was going to take any of the ink that was there before and stamp it onto this white paper. Because if I would have stamped it and it did leave color on the cardstock and then heat emboss it in clear, it wouldn't be the final look that I wanted, which is a white emboss resist. I set the powder on there and then heat set it, and then let's move on to coloring in these little shells. To color in the shells, I will be using the same color that I stamped it in on the wreath. I pulled in my homemade palette there, it's just a piece of cardstock that's laminated, and I also have a water brush. I'm going to put a little bit, I think I started with sea glass, onto my palette and pick it up with my water brush. Now this is going to be very faint and I just kind of colored over the area where each of the shells was. Because there is a lot of white embossing and detail in this, I did want to make sure that the entire shell was saturated so I spent some time making sure it was all covered. Once I had each shell colored in, I cleaned off my brush on just a scrap of paper or a piece of paper towel before moving on to the next one. Finally for that sand dollar, once it was done, I let this piece set for about five minutes to dry completely and let that color soak into the cardstock. Once the piece had dried, I brought in a piece of paper towel and very gently just patted on the top of that. I didn't want to rub it and accidentally transfer color to other images. I brought in my fine tip scissors and cut out each of those shells. Now you know lately I have been loving my brother scan and cut, but because this is white embossing, it wasn't going to work for these. I want to be able to fit this wreath on a regular size card front. So what I'm going to do is cut this piece in half at 2 inches and spread that across the card base. Before I do that though, I mat each half on a piece of tranquil teal cardstock that is 4 and an eighth inches wide by 5 and 3 eighths inches tall. My sentiment will go across the center of the card on a white piece of cardstock, but I'll need a little bit more of a border to help separate that and cover up that opening. I originally brought in the navy and the craft, but I wasn't really feeling either of those, so I went ahead and brought in another scrap of the tranquil teal and decided that I liked that much better. 
I cut this down so it was just an eighth of an inch taller than my white piece of cardstock, which my white cardstock is one and a quarter inches tall. And for now, I am just kind of rough cutting these to the width. I will be trimming this down later. Once again, my Misty is making an appearance, and this time it's to start off by stamping the sentiment. I chose the See You Soon from the stamp set, and I played around with the arrangement of that and with the three seashells on that cardstock strip. Once I had them in a place that I thought looked good, I picked the stamp up with the door of my Misty, and then I spent just a little bit of time making sure that was straight across using that etched grid on the lid. Once I had that in a good place, I inked it up with Blue Lagoon and stamped it onto that strip of cardstock. Now I'm not going to put my Misty away yet because I decided to decorate the inside of my card with three of the seashells as well. I got these placed off screen in an arrangement that I liked and then I inked them up with three different inks, the same colors that I used on the wreath. I just thought this was a little bit fun for the inside. All of the pieces were now done so I could start assembling my card. The first thing I did was put the matted wreath on the card front and there's just a little bit of craft showing around the edge. Then I placed that decorated piece of white cardstock on the inside for my personal message. Then as I was matting my sentiment strip with the teal cardstock, I ran out of adhesive. So I pulled in my alternate ATG, which I have decorated here to finish off this card. I just thought you might like to see that. It's definitely different. This was when I realized I should have trimmed the sentiment strip down before adhering it to the card. So I took that off camera, trimmed it to what it needed to be with, and then I'm going to place my seashells onto the card front. Now I arranged these once again, but it wasn't the same as before, but I popped all three of those up off the card front with some mini dimensionals. Oops, I almost forgot about the QOTV or the question of the video. This voicing over went pretty quickly today, so I thought now would be a great time to stop by with that. This is going to be a quick and easy one that relates to today's card. I would like to know, do you have a wreath builder? And if so, have you ever used any non wreath builder stamp sets with it like I do here today? I would love to know your answer, so please leave that in the comment section below. And don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so you know that I've seen your answer and you would like me to read it. I, of course, have used my wreath builder with non-wreath builder stamps, and I have done it quite a few times. I like to look at what I have to see different ways I can use it, and using those little stamps for the wreath builder is a great way to stretch your supplies. To finish off the card, I brought in some clear dew drops and I placed three of those onto the card front. I thought these kind of reminded me of bubbles and went with that ocean theme. To hold these in place, I used my art glitter glue. I just placed a little bead of it on the card where the gem would go and I let that get tacky for a few seconds and then I picked up my bubble and placed it into the glue. I did let this dry for about five minutes and here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I use those not too shabby sets with the wreath builder to create this card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.